Let's get started with our videos for week three of the D4L community module. There are several different interesting models for an online community lifecycle, and I've shared some of them on the additional resources page. Here's one that's more generally about team formation, but it's easy to remember. Forming, storming, norming, and performing from Bruce Tuckman. This week we're focused on the forming part, how to get an online learning community off the ground. We'll get to storming, norming, and performing next week. This model has a beginning and end, but the same ideas also translate into a more cyclical model. This is my own adaptation of the several different models I've consulted and shared with you, with a cyclical ongoing approach. As one section of our instruction may end, we often continue to teach a unit over and over, and sometimes continue to keep in touch with our former students. Again, this week we'll focus on the early stages for inception and creation, with an eye to what to expect in the later stages so our early planning can be proactive. Before we really get into forming this community, we need to return to your learning objectives. Here's an example of the breakdown for a SMART objective. Remember these from the Foundation module? This example is applied to an objective from the Diversity module. This activity could be conducted and assessed in a more private way, but we chose to do it as a discussion forum submission so that you all could learn more from each other in addition to your own evaluation. Which of your objectives can you assess related to social activities within the community? Use this as a guide to adapt some of your existing learning objectives into SMART objectives for your learning community. There's space in your workbook for five different objectives, but you may have more or less than that. It will all depend on the subject of your capstone project. Try to examine at least two. If you're having any trouble with objectives, because let's face it, they are hard, it can be helpful to use the five whys technique. Have you heard of this before? It's a common mistake to list something as an objective when what you're really looking for is something deeper. So, as you refine your objectives, ask yourself why and write down your answer. Then ask yourself why again. <laughs> Continue until you really feel like a four-year-old and you've asked yourself why five times. By then you should really be at the heart of the issue. This may help you to find alternative activities, including multimodal activities, that get you to your true learning objectives, usually better than your original ideas. In this example, I start with the objective of getting students to post in the forum, but I dig deeper into why. The real objective is for students to consider diverse perspectives. So maybe forum posts aren't the only way to get community members to share different perspectives with each other. What are alternative activities that could achieve the same goal? Along with universal design for learning, can I offer a few different kinds of activities for learners with different needs and preferences to achieve this objective? Along with these ideas of looking deeper, I'm also going to have you reflect in your workbook about your mission and vision for how your project fits into the bigger picture. How does your instruction fit in the mission of your library? What long-term impact will it have on your learners? We'll stop here for you to reflect.